Hey everybody, Scott Flanders here. Welcome to another lesson from the Character Design Monster Lab. If you've been following along, you've seen me go through all of the initial phases of design work to create several pages of sketches and exploring our ideas. Now that we've got all of these sheets of sketches, it's time to go digital. We'll start off with cleaning up the scans of our pencil work. Now I know it's not the sexiest topic, but it is very important information that we just don't see too much of out there. So join me as we learn how to make your sketchbook drawings look way better than what I see from students most of the time. In the premium course, you'll get even more insight into my design choices, along with tips for how to better your own design work. I'll also show you some tricks for introducing color to your pages of sketches. If you'd like to see the full process or submit your own concepts for critique, you can follow along at proco.com slash monster lab. Okay, now on to the lesson. All right, guys. So we're back and today we're going to be transferring all the drawings and all the explorations into digital, into Photoshop, so I can begin pushing my designs. I scanned all of my drawings on a big, uh, what do I have over there? It's a big Epson scanner. Workforce WF7610. A workforce, what the fuck, 7610. It's a printer, scanner, fax machine, not that anyone faxes. It's really nice and I've been using it for at least like five years now or something. Not that I'm promoting it or anything, <laughs> but so I took all of my 11 by 17 images, scanned them at 600 DPI, so really high resolution. And now I wanna show you just how to optimize your drawings. I notice when I'm working with students, like when I taught at LCAD, um, when I'm doing my mentorships, people share their drawings with me and they're always like really bad photos from their camera or scans that they have to like put together piecemeal. And I just wanna show you the way I do it because I feel like you can take your pencil drawings and you can turn them into little portfolio pieces in and of themselves. If you take some time to present them, let's start with my warm up. I'm just going to open up my image file, drag it right in. Now, one of the first things that I usually try to remove from my drawings is this like smudginess. You see in all the negative space as I'm moving my hand around, you get this kind of like graying, the smoky gray, subtle smudge kind of makes it look muddy. I just want to increase contrast. There's a really easy way to do that. First, I'm going to duplicate my layer. So I go over here, you'll see these little four little lines, different options over here in the layers palette. Go to duplicate layer, go to levels, down here at the bottom, create new fill or adjustment layer. It's this like circle that's cut in two, like black and white. Press that one and I'm gonna go to levels. And levels adjustments, there's input levels and output levels. Input levels is like introducing more white, introducing more black, input, inputting more black or more white to your value range. Output is removing black from the value range or removing white. I'm gonna grab the white input slider and bump it up a bit. Not too much. I don't wanna start losing information. I don't want it to become like blown out. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna press Control, Shift, Alt, E. This is like a shortcut for a screenshot. It's gonna sample all layers below and create a new flattened version on top. Control, Shift, Alt, E. Boom. And now I have this screenshot on top, you'll see. It sampled everything below. It's got all the properties, but I haven't, rem I haven't thrown away or flattened all my layers below. That's very useful in case I have to go back and do any like layer management sometimes can occur. Now I'm going to drop out the, um, any color information in this drawing. I want to get it back to just full grayscale. So control U to bring up my hue saturation window, pull out all saturation, drop it down to negative 100. Press OK. There's no color information in this drawing at this point. Now I'm going to duplicate this same layer. Oh, this one I'm going to set to multiply. Now multiply, what it does is it multiplies all pixels besides white. It's going to layer them on top of each other, begin to stack them. So like a 20% gray becomes a 40% gray, etc. So if you look here, all my darks have become darker, but my whites are fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the opacity on this a bit because now all my darks and my midtones are punchier. So I drop that down a bit. I'm going to press Control L. I'm going to bump up my whites. And again, it's removing more of that gray in the negative space. It's being becoming cleaner and crisper. Now I'm going to take another screenshot that we talked about. So Control Shift Alt E. Hold down Shift, click on the top, and go under this layer just above the original layer. So I'm selecting all the layers except the original starting layer. And I'm going to collapse them by pressing Control E. 
Now I only have two layers in my file, you'll see. It's going to make this very apparent to see how it's changing. My original, and now with my adjustments. And look at the increase in contrast, like clarity in my, in my drawing sheet. Just looking like much nicer, much more legible. Now I think I'm going to even try this again. So I'm going to duplicate layer, set to multiply. Now that's pretty intense. I'm going to drop it down, drop down the opacity, press L again. Okay. Now, there are some areas where I pressed really hard and some areas where I didn't, so it's kind of an inconsistent pull throughout the sheet. So I want to pull out the darkest darks, like the very darkest darks, because they're applied somewhat inconsistently as a result of my adjusting pencil pressure. It's pretty, it's pretty similar, but there's like a range, like a deeper range of like a, you know, 80 to 100%, you know, dark gray, black that is only distributed in a few of my characters here. And I want to remove that to make everything feel a little more even as far as my application of values. So I'm going to go to levels. I go to the black slider and output, and I'm going to pull on that a little bit. And it's just removing some of those darkest darks. Still have really nice contrast, but it's pulling out those ones that are in that like 80 to 100% that felt a little bit inconsistent. That feels better. So now, that I've got it flattened out a little bit, I want to grab my grays, just my mid-tones, and darken them a bit. So I'm leaving my blacks alone, leaving my whites alone. Just going to adjust my grays. I'm just going to do another level thing on top. Grab my gray and bring it over, just not too much. Okay. I grab that and flatten. I want to show you something. It's just a little more even, getting nice and crispy. Okay, so now, it kind of depends. I don't always do what I'm about to do where I'm going to actually like go in and clean up edges. Not on all the characters, but on some I'm going to do it. Let's just clean up in some of these spots where like I maybe had trouble during my drawing phase. I was having trouble hitting something and it starts to look a little bit overworked. Like the paper starts to look overworked. I, I really don't like that. It bothers me. <laughs> so pull them out like here, this, you know, this bit. It's the beauty of Photoshop. Something's bugging you that much change it. Holding down shift key when I'm using my, right now I'm using the polygonal lasso tool, different than the one I usually use, the, you know, the one that, the free form like regular lasso tool. This is allowing me to get really clean angles really quick. And it works especially well in some of these parts where I went, where I was doing um, very hard angles freehand. It's like, it kind of matches up. This is a slightly more mindless task. It's more like a production cleanup for my drawings, but I don't mind it. I'm sort of anticipating including this in a sketchbook or something in the future, or at least setting myself up so I could. So this little bit of cleanup is uh, it's kind of preemptive in a good way. I'm thinking ahead. It's better for presentation. This is kind of little, but you see this little edge of the paper. Better way to do that. You just take the rectangular marquee tool. You can hold down shift key and you'll automatically get a straight line. Those of you who are new to Photoshop, I'm just holding down shift and going up. Okay, cool. So I've got like some clean up white layers to make sure I didn't like lose too much. Didn't accidentally paint anything out that I would do want. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to go back and do a quick pass over a lot of my eyeballs. Just to make those, those like eyeballs and noses just to make sure those really pop nice. In this case, I am going to use a brush where I have to apply more pressure sensitivity. I don't want it too hard, like crisp cut. I want it to feel more or less consistent. Same kind of like pressure signatures as I'm using when I'm drawing in pencil. It feels like similar pressure was being used. Or if I just use like a hard tool like this brush pen, you know, you can feel that that hard edge is too distinct. It stands out. Doesn't look right. Could even potentially like sample areas where, where I do want to push back a nose. Those of you guys who are new to Photoshop, you have two options for your values or your paint swatches in Photoshop. I've got one set to white where I just sampled my background. I want the closest, like the most uh, common white. It's not even a true white. It's like slightly off white that's present throughout the majority of my image. And then I've got like a very dark, very dark, dark gray. That's about the just slightly off the darkest darks in here because I don't want it to pop too much. And I'm just switching between those two as I'm going back and doing this like quick cleanup pass. Just, you can press the X button to toggle back and forth between very quick, very quickly between those swatches. 
one, two, one, two, you see that? That's really useful when you're doing black and white art actually, like, or the two-tone stuff that I'll do, the shape, shape curvy stuff. Or if you're doing like digital inking, switch back and forth between your two. So you could do eraser tool also, or you could just press X and you stay on paintbrush. There are some limitations with that. Like you may want to, in your eraser tool, you treat it like a, an exacto or something. You set it to something that feels more like scraping or has some texture to it. But if you're just wanting to use the same sort of tool, you know, the same like tool tip, then you could do that just by switching back and forth between, you know, your two values with the X key. <laughs> There's some funny faces in here. Some goofy stuff. Is it triangle Y? Jack o are the best. I can't wait to actually just like carve some. This is like a pretty right on the money example of how I would do this kind of thing. This is exactly how I did it. I just went through and I bump, basically trying to increase the contrast in my values of my drawing by using um, levels adjustments and um, multiply layers. I'm just basically um, trying to pull out any of the gray in the negative space between my characters and increase contrast within the character drawings themselves. And then I go back and do a little bit of cleanup work around the borders where necessary. You know, so I flatten all that. Now look at the difference between like this and this. Like drawing still looks clear, but this is just pushed significantly. It's just better for presentation. So I think we're going to now go through and I'm going to apply some of these cleanup techniques to some of the other pages, but I'm going to go through that a lot faster. Yeah, let's see. Let's start with this one. Do the same thing. I'm going to drop down the opacity on this multiply layer. So it's not quite so harsh. I'm going to bump up the whites. Take this. Remove any color. Try it again. To multiply, drop the opacity again. Then pull out some of the blacks and output. Cool. That's pretty similar. And again, now I'm going back just like last time and I'm cleaning up some of the areas that got like overworked. Polygonal lasso tool is very useful. Like this area is a place I feel like I kind of overworked. Okay, now I'm going to go back and hit some of those white eyes. Cool, here's the sheet. Let's find pencils too. I'm going to bring in the last one. So I'm kind of speeding up here, just applying these same techniques to, every, to all of our sheets from this mini course. This is a good opportunity for some of that old-timey chase music, you know? When they just want to speed through this alec, you know? Just play some stupid, like... <laughs> Save real quick. Don't forget to save every once in a while. Very important. Just command S. Save your butt. So we got our three sheets here, all formatted nicely for presentation. All the sheets are looking pretty good now. Nice high contrast. All the little shapes pop inside. Nice clear focal points. This is a pretty clean and accurate example of the way I would go about formatting my drawings after all that time. And you know, usually that it would take like maybe an hour or two or something. All right, cool. See you guys in the next step. I hope you all found that useful. Remember that a cleaned up page of sketches is much more likely to grab people's attention. If you want to follow along with the full process or submit your designs for critique, Get the premium course at proco.com slash monster lab. See you next time in the monster lab. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>